Comedian Jeff Richards is here in the studio with us, and we're very happy to have you back, which none of us seem to remember the first time very well. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know that you were on the show because I remember the stuff that we talked about, but it was a long, long time ago. If he was, I think it was before me because I'm a fan of Jeff. No, because and- you told me he was yeah. on both shows on Mad TV and Saturday Night Live. I, did, I was unaware of that. I don't know. Anyway, Jeff doesn't right, remember. Oh, your mic's not on. There you go. How's that? Your mic's still not on. What do we do, Spanish? Hold on. We... Did you put it in something else? Yeah, because... try now. Hello? Yeah, we go. Sorry right. about that. Uh, yeah, I, Jeff doesn't remember. We don't remember, but it's <laughs> great to have you back. Huh? I'm the only one who remembers, but sometimes I dream stuff, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you want to know something really funny? I, I was looking at some stuff online this morning and uh, about you, about your career, and it's there was a question that said, what ever happened to Jeff Richards? And I went, oh, my God, what happened? Jeff Richards retired from acting and moved to San Bernardino uh, County where he lived in a trailer park and collected disability for the remainder of his life. <laughs> There's another actor named Jeff Richards. Yeah. That's some very sad confusion to have. Could have been the baseball player. Oh, there's another one? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a oh. probably common. Yes, Carmen. His mic is still not coming through. What? On this end. How about now? Hello? Hello? There you go. All right. Sorry. I have fat fingers and I hit two buttons at once. Uh, well, anyway, it's great to have you back here. Um now, what is the deal? You lived here? I remember at some point, I think you moved here or you were staying here for a little while. No, I was. Yeah, uh, Was that when we were talking? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Jesus Christ, you don't remember anything. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember. No, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to move here <clears throat> and then I didn't. I ended up moving to Portland, Oregon. Why? What are you searching for? Uh, I don't know what I'm searching for, yeah. but I guess the the weather kind of got, got to me. It's It's, as a fat guy, I feel like this is the absolute worst place to live. I love everything about it except the stressful heat for 10 months of the, out of the year. I'm loving it right now because yeah. you get a little break every once in a while. But I know in about another 30 days, it's going to be humid for the next 10 months. That's the worst part about living here. Yeah. This is a great house, though. Jeez. Well, the house isn't bad. Uh, but, I, yeah, that's the thing. I'm very content inside. I'm the yeah. only one who loved COVID. This is the best thing yeah. that ever happened I did, to too. You did? I did. Kind of, I didn't. I mean, I loved... Uh, yeah, a lot more napping. And, yeah, no one yeah. expected you to do anything. You could be lazy in COVID because yeah. everybody was. Yeah, so it worked out, and it was just really weird because during COVID, I lost a bunch of weight, and everybody else was gaining weight and trying desperately to find uh, weights to lift and all that stuff. And I lost weight, and then COVID got finished, and then I got fatter again. So I, it doesn't make any sense in my life. Why, why do you think? Why do you think that was? With because I started uh, a diet and working out right before COVID hit, okay. and I was really into it. And I was I didn't want to break it, so I kept going, and and I was re- doing really good. And then once you got once I got comfortable and doing nothing, and my wife's you know riding pelotons and doing all that stuff, and I was like, no, nah, I'm good, man. We live in the house now. I'm just gonna go out there and sit yeah. in my pool. Nobody's coming over. Germs in the air. We're fine here. That's how I kind of was with like because I started my podcast right before the pandemic. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't gonna be video at all. I was going to do video. You were just going to do a regular audio do, podcast. Yeah, just audio. Just get it done. Get it out. Yeah. And then with the Zoom stuff, I'm like, well, you could do, you know, because cause Zoom, you know, with the deep fake, you can't move your head too far left or right. Well, I got to explain to everybody what what you do. It is it is beyond amazing. And I was watching some of it this morning. Your so deep fake podcast is, is Jeff pretending to be a, another character, but it, it creates the it gives you the visual of whoever you're you're trying to be. So, like, I watched Harlan Williams interview Harlan Williams today. And hey, that was body. The- it's got the bay hair. <laughs> I really enjoyed your bathroom. <laughs> it's got the bus sink. He's great. And he's he's the right amount of weird uh, uh, that he's perfect. And you interviewing him as him is even funnier. Uh, why don't you take a pair of leotards and throw them up over your shoulders and then take a hike to San Bernardino? <laughs> That's his deal, dude. He's yeah. nuts. So, so how did you start doing First of all, I had a hard time just doing Zoom. How did you do the whole deep fake thing? Like, was is it easier to do than I'm expecting, or did somebody set you up, or how did you do that? I, uh, I, I, I called a guy named Scott Welsh, who's really great at uh, deep fakes, right? And just said, let's do a collaboration. You know, and and then we did uh, Patrick Bateman. Uh, I American saw that Psycho. from American Psycho. But the first one we did was just me to camera, just talking. Right. And uh, and then, yeah, I got him. I got him to, you know, help me do these deep fakes. How uh, hard is it to do? 
How hard is it to do? Like, I don't even technologically. Really, I don't even really know. You, you just hit buttons. Right I don't there. do it. Yeah, I don't do it. No, it's uh, and now it's uh, my friend Two Crows Thomas that does it, and he, you know, he's amazing. I don't know what he does. I right. really don't know what it is, but it's basically an overlay of the person's face on your face, right? And so you actually have to wear. I saw you doing the Bateman thing. You actually put put on a tie and all that to do the yeah, to do yeah, the bit, yeah. 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 So, so you, they do the overlay on the face, and then the mouth and the eyes and stuff will move with you. And it is watching a celebrity say the most ridiculous things. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Favorite one that I've done? Yeah. Oh, um, maybe uh, I did Hannibal Lecter with uh, <laughs> Sherry O'Terry. <laughs> uh, I I love uh, Busey. Busey's the well, best. Busey. It, it's funny because you said it's celebrities saying crazy things and stuff. And I think that's probably the one that blew up the most because I think a lot of people thought that was Gary Busey because you do such a good Busey and he says that crazy stuff. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. And like, you hadn't seen him lo- for such <laughs> yeah. amount of time. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I think I'll be honest. I think the first time I saw it, I was like, this is not Gary Busey. <laughs> like I it took me a second to realize what I was watching because it came up in my in my algorithm. And then when I realized what it is, you realize how brilliant it is. Gary Busey talking about his buttered sausage is one of the funniest goddamn things I've ever seen. Let's talk about buttered sausage. Where does it come from? What does it do? Get it out of my face. Butter, I don't buy jam. I buy honey and I kiss it on the lips. (laughs) (laughs) It's great. So now, uh, anybody ever complain about that stuff? Like Just Gary Busey. Oh, he did? He does? Yeah, I, I saw him at the comedy store not super long ago. And I said, hey, Gary, can I get an autograph? And he saw me. He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Take a hot, buddy. I don't need your circumstance and popping stance. <laughs> and he's always doing those Buseyisms. Yeah, uh, Buseyisms. Canada. Canada. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> he, he fades out. He, uh, I'll tell you, I, that show that they, you remember that reality show they had with him and that weird kid. I'm with you. Yeah, oh, that was the, that was genius. I wish they would do more. I used to, we used to talk to Regis every once in a while, and uh, Regis was talking about possibly retiring. And I'd go, Regis, if you move down here, we need to film a TV show called My Best Friend Regis. And Regis, and I just take you out to do all the bad stuff that I do. Yeah, and you, we'll go shoot and we'll go to strip clubs. We'll do all this stuff. And Regis is like, I like it. I like it. But of course, he died and never happened. But uh, the, they, I would watch more of those shows. Regular person with famous person. Yeah. Like now, I want to do on my new goal is Oprah. Me and Oprah would have a ball together. Yeah. 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 See, you know, yeah. Oprah. I guarantee you, I do things Oprah never even thought about doing. Right. And they're right. common man stuff. But Oprah's never, Oprah's never went and fired shotguns at a, at a, at a gun range. She'd have a ball doing that. She would. I don't know. Jeff Richards is here. Jeff was on Saturday Night Live and Mad TV. Which was first? Mad TV. Mad TV, the uh, more creative and funnier one, I think, um, took the mold of Saturday Night Live and, and really turned it into something really well. I don't know where it, it you know, how it didn't overtake everything, but um, how do you, so they don't have a chip on your shoulder when you go from Mad TV to S- SNL? They don't look down on that? They thought that that was uh, good for you? They didn't know. They oh, but, Well, Lauren didn't know. Lauren, uh-huh. Lauren didn't know. Um, they didn't tell him until after I auditioned. And came to meet him. Right. And they, they told him so. Yeah, I, I thought he would. He would have probably been. Yeah, he yeah, would have not right. wanted that. Probably. What is the What is the process? Can you tell us? I always enjoy hearing people tell us about their silent live auditions. Oh yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, just basically got in a car accident. Was on the freeway. Got in a car accident. And as soon as I pulled back on the road, I got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I, of course I answered. Right. And uh, my manager was like, you're going to audition for SNL in two weeks. Wow. And I said, no, I'm not ready. I want to wait. And he says, it's like the final audition. Like, you just, you go to New York and, oh wow. you know. So, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess so, for sure. Did you ever um, think you'd be in a position to get a phone call that said you're auditioning for Saturday Live in two weeks? And you go, no, nah, I think I'm going to wait. Like, most people are like, are you kidding? Well, I was just like, scared, probably, yeah, you know. Yeah. But... You know, I'd already done Mad TV, so I was like, being able to even audition was yeah. like. Uh, Who was on Mad TV when you were on? Um, Aries Spears, Michael McDonald. Um, Michael McDonald, there's something about him that is scary to me. Like he, se- yeah, that he seems. Yeah, like, like he, he knows something you don't know. Yeah, yeah, like like 
I don't know him at all, yeah. at, at all. Uh, if I woke up tomorrow and TMZ said Michael McDonald arrested bodies of dead children in his basement, I would go, yeah, yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> I always just looked like he would do Stewart? that. Stewart? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know him. He's probably a nice guy. And all no, that. he's a nice guy yeah. for sure. Uh, but I just he has that look about him. And then, okay, Ari Spears, also another lunatic. Um, Ari Spears left a radio interview. The guy talked about him on the radio and went back and beat the guy up. Really? Yeah, a friend of mine in, in Miami. He, they left, and uh, we talked crap about Ari Spears, but we know to say it to his face when he's here because we don't want him to have to come back and fight us. Because I've, he cannot throw a Cannot baseball. throw a baseball. I've never seen a grown man, especially a black man, less athletic than Ari Spears is. <laughs> uh, nice guy, though. Great impression. Yeah. Uh, all right, who else? Uh, by the way, uh, Aries was, uh, we wanted to do a deep fake on the show, uh-huh. but, uh, he wanted to do, um, I can't even remember his name. It's terrible. From, from Sopranos. The Tony Soprano, the James Gandolfini. Yeah. He does it. To see that voice come out of his face is hilarious. But we couldn't do it with the, with the deep fake. Cause he's black. Yeah. You he, couldn't he, make them all white. Okay. All it right. was like, cause you know, it was just. Deepfake's racist. Yeah, Deepfake <laughs> is racist. He should do a character like do Tony anyway. Soprano. Yeah, I, I, it would be great if you could. I mean, because the problem is, is with the with the deepfake, it's like all the images, the high high def images of the person. Those are what's used. Right. So it's all as many as those are out there. Okay. So it, it's and then I, and then you think there'd be a million of him, right, right, right. but then there's not necessarily no. a million of him. You know, that's interesting. Uh, all right. So uh, so back to your SNL thing. You got two weeks to do it. What do they tell you to prepare? Just five minutes, five minutes of stand up, five minutes of impressions, characters, characters, impressions. Yeah. OK. And would you roll in with what, what was your what were you most proud of? Oh, I don't know. Um, Letterman, I did Letterman. You do Letterman. Nice to see you. Good to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope at some point, I don't know when, at some point, I could get another cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Did you uh, Did you ever hear the um, evil David Letterman? Yeah, yeah. From Stern Show? That guy got a hold of us and would leave me weird voicemails. And it is just un believable how much he sounds like him like just in a casual oh hey uh mike uh listening from chicago and and he would just do it and, and it's so weird how much he sounded like him it was yeah. amazing he, he letterman's a great one because he's so such a great conversationalist so yeah you can say kind of anything you know like it, you, you would hope and and this is this is the this is the basic so i don't know uh well <laughs> and and then and then the guy says to me do you want a, a crescent roll <laughs> to this day i still even with my kids if i'm helping them with their homework and i go all right let me look at this and i go z z that's all letterman that's all from watching them anytime i pause and i sing it's all from watching that show yeah um all right so you do and and uh and they love you right away do you is it like they say where you don't hear any emotion you don't hear any laughter i did hear a few laughs you did there's like eight people out there okay it's like Tina Fey, Lauren Michaels, uh, Paul Pell, Steve Higgins. Um, yeah, so I did hear a little bit. So I was standing there. I finished, and no one said anything to me. So I just said, okay, see you later. <laughs> and I just thought, well, I should just leave. You right, know? right. So I started to leave, and then Lauren stopped me and shook my hand and said, good job. Oh, oh, oh that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So so after you get that, when you leave that, like you have the best dinner that night and call your friends and be like, I have I, I, Lauren shook my hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just like, th- that was enough yeah. in a way. I yeah. mean, I really wanted it, but that was like, I did all I could do. Yeah. But did it. they confirm that you got the job? Because no. I, yeah, that's what I always hear is that the people are like, they're like, hey, good job, whatever. And then you just, okay, did I get it or what is going on? And yeah, kind of leave you hanging. Left me hanging, except for the <laughs> handshake. I thought, well, that's a pretty good, right, good right, thing. Good you probably don't do that all the time. And so. when do they let you know that you got it? Well, then they, you fly, fly to New York again uh like a week later to meet lauren uh-huh. so and then even when i met him i didn't know i was like <laughs> you know i said i thought i'd ask him a question to see if i so he's he's like so what do your parents do or where you know mm-hmm. and then i i just said so uh am i gonna get my own computer <laughs> <laughs> and he goes yeah, yeah. No good <laughs> did he get it that you were being funny or because he seems like such an odd guy i mean he must have known i was probing for an answer Uh, 
That's great. That is so, that is great, man. And did yeah. you, did you love going there? Like, I, well, I remember when I worked at the radio station, when I was a kid for the first time, I used to say, I would do this for free. I would come in here every day just to be in this building and do it. And I'd been on Saturday Night Live set a couple of times and just the magic that's there, you feel it. I mean, that had to be, that's gotta be awesome. Yeah, it was a lot. It was really good. Who, 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 what years, like, what did you, like, who were your office mates and that kind of stuff? Um, Sloven and Allen. Eric Sloven, okay. Leo Allen, um, uh, was my first two years. Oh, wow. Max Brooks was my first roommate. Right, uh, Mel Brooks's son. Oh wow. Um, and then is he and funny then I, or is he there because he's Mel Brooks's son? He's funny. You know, it's just he was a little different than the show. You know, he's writes books more than sketches, but right. but uh, a good guy. And um, and that then then I had my own office the third year. And who is doing news this time? This is how I can f- try to figure out in my head where I was. Tina Fey and Jimmy Fallon. Oh, so you were there for you were there. For I did. Oh. Hey, dude. <laughs> hey, Jimmy Fallon, you know. Uh, hey, hey, dude. Uh, <laughs> it's the most incredible thing in the whole world. I can't believe I'm here. Oh, All right. I love it. Do you know, now, uh, who do you want to do? Like how I feel like when you do the deep fake, the voice doesn't have to be that. As long as you get the gist of who you're doing right who, anybody you're working on that you can't get or that you're uh, trying to work trying on? to do a jordan peterson oh yeah i yeah. watched your jordan peterson yeah, it was funny it's, yeah it's yeah so, so yeah. Nice. <laughs> he goes, what are you gonna do he goes i want to eat meat <laughs> I, but, but that's, that's can i swear or no 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 swearing. No, no swearing. I, because i can't i can't go to the bathroom <laughs> because i eat meat <laughs> but then i can't go again but then i eat more meat yeah <laughs> Now, now, uh, if I end up getting too personal, but if you do these things, uh, and uh, are we monetizing this? Is it working out well, or, or? just uh, yeah? In the last year, I yeah. started to monetize a little bit, um, but yeah, just trying to get the subscribers and That's build it up because I never, never really did much to my YouTube up yeah. until three years ago. That's what we we just uh, started revamping our YouTube too, just because we never we do a video component on this show along with the radio and i'm like i got enough to worry about let alone youtube so i have somebody else doing that now so hopefully hopefully we can get up to speed but yeah that is that seems to be where the action's at and then you i i remember in the beginning harlan williams was the first person i told he was talking about his podcast and i go how long have you been doing this podcast he's like oh like three years and i go you making money off he goes no i go then why are you doing it i go it's a, it's a waste of time and he goes uh will you listen to it and tell me if it's good and i go yeah i'll be totally honest with you i'll tell you if you should stop or keep going and I listened to it, and I laughed through the whole thing. And I went, "Oh no, no you got to keep doing it. This is great." <laughs> well, did you? You talking about the Harlan Highway, the the uh, the first one the first where he's one. on his own? Yes. And now he does guests. Right, but the first yeah. one on his own was. I didn't expect him to be as honest as he was because he was talking about. Um, it was like a racial shooting. It was a shooting of racial tension, and yeah, he was very honest with his answers, which a lot of times with celebrities it's hard to do. And then at the end, he's like. Uh, okay, it's the end of the show and they, let's bring the characters in and he started talking like a bird and all this stuff. Like that. <laughs> this is, I just went from this guy starting a race war to now talking about like, like a bird and he's, he's like, oh, it's such he's a great show. really smart about his comedy. He yeah. slides things in and, you know, he, you go see his shows, he does crowd work, he's seamless. Yeah. He's just a great, funny he's, guy. He's good and his uh, and his stuff with you on the uh, deep fakes is the, the best. All right, so what's the best place for people to, to watch it on YouTube? And I see it on Instagram, but that's probably not helping you. Uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram's good if you follow me, the Jeff Richards. Uh, yeah, but the the uh, the YouTube is the one where you get the long ones because I do these. Some of them are like 30, 40 minutes yeah. long, like the Busey's forty minutes. Yeah, um, which I just did recently with Trump, um, John D. Domenico, and but uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You know, the YouTube and and that's pretty much what is, it. what is jeff just search jeff Richards. uh the jeff richard show jeff yeah. Richard show okay and uh and what are you doing outside of that what else are you working on anything? i did a, a couple movies last year uh one i had the lead in that's going to come out this year what is that it's called pay to die uh-huh. it's a horror comedy movie nice sean c phillips and lauren francesca um yeah so just waiting for that to come out it's, do you do you, and uh money wise can you just chill out and do a things bit, yeah oh, that's so yeah. great man i would if i was living in new york and i was on saturday Night live i would have spent all that money in the first year i would have been like i'm gonna be here forever <laughs> yeah that's how it is how did you leave did you get fired or did you quit or did you just run out of time 
yeah, fired. Right. <laughs> well, what, but I, I, what do they say? Do they go, well, hey, I mean, the not... thing is, I, I really didn't know how to write, and I should have made more of an effort to learn how to write sketches. Right. Because that's really what a lot of it boils down to. So, so you have to write your own. You better be able to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's like I got put in a lot of things because I could do, you know, impressions. I could do like, yeah, but throw that, an impression in there. But like, to but like drive Dennis, Dennis Miller did the news, so they didn't. He didn't really expect him to do it. He was like, I wasn't on a lot of skits because I wasn't there for that. I was there to do the news. So if you got a good impression guy, that's kind of like the guy who does Biden is the guy who does Biden. Right, right, right. Uh, but. But with like, and that's kind of what I was thinking. Right. Was like, <laughs> Boy, we that's wrong. exactly what I was thinking. Like, hey, come on, you know, uh, I can learn these and stuff. But, um, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like Daryl Hammond, that that role. Right. But I should have just got more ambitious and worked probably a lot harder. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I've heard David Spade talk about it, and he said he was a you know like a middle act at the time. Whenever he got it, and he goes, I just did stand up. I never did sketches, and they just gave me a legal pad and said, here, go write stuff. And he's like nobody helps you nobody tells you what to do it's gotta yeah. be a weird environment yeah yeah I, I i would love to observe one day just watch a day in the life of that saturday night yeah I, it it's uh it's just the best and it's just the worst sometimes <laughs> yeah. i mean it's just there's no other way to put it it's so uh ralphie may was a comedian who was a good friend of ours and i'd i'd be hanging out with ralphie and he'd have to do a show later and one day i looked at him and i go do you ever get nervous like the day of the show? And and he looked at me, he goes, Do you ever get nervous when you're about to do your radio show? I go, No. He goes, Of course not. He goes, I get excited, but I'm not nervous about it. And I thought, yeah, that's the point where I live now, where to, like last night I was watching Jeopardy and I'm like, I'm going to bed after this. I'm tired. And, I, and I'll figure out the show later on or tomorrow or whatever. And I don't worry about it. But um, if I had goddamn Saturday Night Live, I don't think I'd ever get a breather. I mean, every show when one's over, you got to start worrying about the next one. Yeah, and you just run out of ideas the yeah. longer you're there. Yeah, you know, you go through all your all your good ideas early, and yeah, it's 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 tough. You know, it's really a tough place unless you know unless you come from sketch, which I then didn't really come from. Back if you it. learn how to do it, well, and you have some practice in it for a while. You know, because I was pretty fresh out of the gate getting that show. And that's pretty. That's pretty awesome, though. I mean, you got both. Cool. You got both of them. You know. Yeah. And was Mad TV better a better experience? No. Really? <laughs> no. Why? Why? A same kind of thing, yeah. like just not knowing at all how to write, right. and just bopping around to office and office and being obnoxious. Probably. Uh, so th is that what you got you there to the impressions on on yeah, Mad TV? I think so. Uh, Artie Lang said when they wanted him to be a character, they would give him a cassette tape and he'd have to go home and listen to it over and over again to try and get the impression. Yeah. Is that bay? That's how they do it? Sometimes, yeah. That's like insane. when I did Bill O'Reilly, they gave me a tape and said, you know, try to learn this one. Yeah. Some of them come quick. Yeah. Caution, you're about to enter no spin zone. In fact, it begins in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm telling you right now, the deep fake interviews are some of the best stuff on the internet. Uh, I love them. I, there's nothing we could do here on the show other than hear you do the characters, but I really encourage everybody to go to YouTube, look for the Jeff Richards show and subscribe to it. Like it, tell your friends about it because the best thing you could do is spread it around and subscribe and word of mouth to get it going and let it blow up. I hope I would love to see that them turn that into a, uh, I don't know. I say uh, to me, cause I'm old, everything should be on TV. So, uh, right. Like it would be a good TV show to watch, you know, Just yeah. a fake interview uh, t type thing every night or yeah. a segment on, on, on a news show or something yeah they get a little weird about it on tv because i did uh i did robert downey jr deep fake on lights out with david spade uh -huh. he interviewed me as and they that was a whole thing like back and forth at comedy central like should we do it should we not do it because it's still it's like a gray area with a little bit they should do it of course and they did do it yeah i mean you can put up a little a little disclaimer before or after yeah i mean that is that what they're worried about if getting in trouble i don't know like yeah that's just that gray area of like it is someone's likeness even though it's parody yeah you know um but yeah we ended up doing it but yeah well, that's kind of the hurdle you know i hear you. it'll it, all it's gonna take is one person to get bent out of shape about it and everybody gets sued uh jeff richards go look up the jeff richards show on youtube and subscribe to it thank you for getting up early coming Thank over you. the show it's good to Thank see you, you. Mike.